Hey Duckman, when are you gonna work on Gregory again? <laughs> right now. All right, this front end has its share of rust. If you remember a few videos back, I went ahead and cut out the lower corners in here because I wanted to find out just how much rust there was. The majority of the rust was on this side. As you can see, I've patched up a few pieces in there. I didn't even have to buy a new patch piece. That was just some random metal I had around. And this side over here really had no trouble at all. I just threw some phosphoric acid on it, put a couple coats on it, which is why it turns so white. That needs a little bit of wire brushing or maybe even, um, if I want to go nuts, I could sandblast it, but just enough wire brushing would be good on that. Then it's ready for a primer and some paint and get it sealed up so that way it doesn't rust out again. But uh, we got this front clip here. It needs to be attached. There are lips all the way around this thing. Now, originally I thought that I could just rebuild the front end that was on here by making a new piece that comes down, which is the lip that attaches to the piece that goes on here. I've got that over there right now. <laughs> But that lip is supposed to overlap. Once I receive this piece, I'm kind of glad to uh, have gotten this rather than trying to hack it myself because I noticed that the way this stuff goes together is quite different than what I expected. You see, there's actually a channel that these parts fit into. So that will be put a together with some uh, appropriate panel bond rather than weld it through there and get this thing assembled properly. So this front end should go together with minimal welding. I think I could panel bond both sides and the bottom. And then that lip along the top will be the only one that I have to weld. But anyway, let's go ahead and start tearing some stuff up on this car. We'll put this thing up here on the front and uh, we'll make some lines and figure out where we're going to cut. Alright, this front end... I'm just going to stick it right over the headlight bucket here. should center it and get it to the height it needs to be. And right now I'm looking for approximates. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm just making a rough cut line along the top here. Alright, that should do it. Alright, this is an approximate for where the line is going to be cut. We're going to cut below that because we want this panel to overlap with the piece that's on here so that way we can make our final cut through here later. So if I come down about an inch or so, that ought to be enough to do it. surprised here that this uh, front end didn't just fall off on its own. <laughs> There's nothing holding it in but gravity, which was causing the buckets to sit in here. Now this piece, this piece I never welded in, but we're going to need to. Now that I've gotten this all out, I see just how much easier this is to work on. Wow, okay. <laughs> Before that front end goes back on, one thing is for certain, we're going to get in through here clean up all this stuff, patch up whatever I can, do my final repairs, painting, whatever it is I need to do to seal all this up before this goes back together because this is the easiest way to work on it. <laughs>
Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. And if we get lucky today, B might be showing up as well, but we'll just have to see. I'm actually waiting for her to record another video, which will be on the uh, 1972 Super Beetle that I've got recently. But uh, for the time being, we're going to start some work here on Gregory. As you saw from the beginning of the video, I've already started to hack on this thing. I already started to cut away at that front end because I've got this new piece that I'd like to put on there. So anyways, with that set aside, please like, like, comment, subscribe, plug that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. And check out duckshit.net. That's my website. You'll find all my different social media links as well as the ones to be, because B's got her own YouTube, her own Instagram, her own everything, all the same stuff that I have. You guys should be following me on Instagram too. Despite not having a video up in the past uh, week, that's right, I actually had a week off, I put up a ton of Instagram posts on just a bunch of things that I've been working on and some never before seen photos of Eleanor during the process of rebuilding her. So if you'd like to see some of the other stuff, you don't even have to have an Instagram account. Really, you don't. If you want to comment, you want to like, you'll need one. If you already got a Facebook account, then you already have an Instagram account. All you have to do is log in with Facebook, and you can actually participate there just the same. Also, stuff's been going up my Patreon. For those of you that uh, subscribed this this month, new Patreons, thank you so much. Really, I appreciate it. But with all that set aside, let's go ahead and roll that intro. Well, after cutting things off, I gotta look up inside of here. Looks like there's just some surface rust, no big deal. We'll splash some cat piss on it, just like we did on the bottom here. After scratching it down with a wire brush, do the same thing over on this side. Also, because it looks like it's just a whole lot of surface rust, not much else going on. I do have to peel the rest of this skin off here, because this lip actually has the uh, face plate kind of folded around. It's folded around and then crimped on I'm not sure if they welded it that way, or if it's just stamped on. But nonetheless, I have to cut along this line here and then remove this entire lip that's folded over this edge. Because there should just be, hang on, I guess you really can't see it down here. More so down here, but it's just a little piece of sheet metal that's going to be in here that this gets sandwiched all around that. So that's gotta, gotta come out. All right, well, there's our pieces. We're gonna assemble them real quick. And let me show you what I'm doing on this sucker over here. All right, this panel, goes down over the lower valence, kind of where the low, actually not kind of, it is where the bottom um, bottom of the bus is where the bumper brackets go through. So this is all the way down to the bottom. I'm glad I didn't mount this yet because I wasn't sure how vertical it needed to go because this lip here matters a lot. And this piece actually slots into this. This is the part that I'm glad I didn't have to remanufacture because of all these curves on it. It just would have been a bear. So you see there's a red line on here that I drew that's because I can slot this right into there. This is now lined up properly. Slotted in there like it should be. It needs to be on the ends, touching there like it should be. This is where it needs to go, right in here. Now I'm gonna actually bend this just a little bit more so it sits in here comfortably, so it's not trying to spring its way out. Yeah, it's in there. All right, we got this roll of duct tape here, and this is only temporary. Only temporary to put things in place where they belong. Just trying to hold it in there so we can stick the skin on the front of the bus. And see just how everything's going to line up. That's right, we're putting a bus together with duct tape. When was the last time you saw that? Now, that should hold it on there temporarily so we can see how everything lines up on the front of the bus.
that is just incredible everything actually fit on there on the first try I need a few more clamps particularly those ones that you see down there on the lower left those uh, double tongued ones are kind of important in fact I think I'm gonna need about two or three more on this side two or three more on that side for sandwiching everything together everything actually fits quite well but I need to be able to press this stuff in here now I was talking about this lip earlier how the old piece is held on this new piece you can see it it needs to be pressed in then this needs to be folded around so what I'll probably do is get this in there tightly and then gently with a body hammer just start whacking the thing into place I don't have a proper um, stamp for it or something but it doesn't have to go too far I mean Jesus not even 90 degrees less than that I'd say about 60 70 degrees to fold it into place otherwise uh, yeah that fit on there very very well now I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of welding on this when I put this together finally I'm going to try to um, minimize the welding so as to not have so much fill required here on the front end of the bus as this is iconic this is that special shape this V nose that the split bus has that makes this bus so unique from so many other vehicles and with that said I don't want to have to fill this sand this put a ton of friggin work into this because if I start welding in putting holes in places it's just gonna be yeah a lot more work anyway we'll get into what we're using as an alternative in, instead of welding and it doesn't mean I'm not gonna stop welding entirely but anyway we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but that's coming up soon what I need to do next is start figuring out how I'm gonna keep these two panels together and I'm thinking probably drill along here in a couple places and start installing some Clecos and that way this is all nice and rigid as you can see that these two pieces are right here and they're kind of soft because they're not attached but once they're attached that should be better I can't run the clamp all the way into the middle because they're just too short I'm looking in the bumper bracket holes it looks like they line up even the bottoms of these panels here are really close I say within about a sixteenth of an inch they're almost even and I kind of fudged it because the panel that's behind this I just guessed where it was supposed to go I don't really know I've never worked on one of these before so I just kind of wung it and it looks like I, I bang on nailed it this should be good I trust this okay well let's go ahead and get these things drilled install some Clecos in there and try to solidify this front end as I think uh, we're going to somewhat finalize its position as to where you see it I just wanted to take one more step back to admire just how well that panel fit that uh, that's remarkable <laughs> I mean on the first try it just slotted like right in like it was supposed to be there and then well actually it is supposed to be there but that part originally came from CIP one I didn't actually make the purchase on that one it came from a friend of mine and he owed me a favor so he and I worked something out and I received that panel otherwise I would have just ordered it from CIP one anyway so check out their website for the latest prices and uh, of course CIP one is the sponsor of Gregory so if you need anything from CIP one very often it's uh, free shipping for over a hundred dollars at least it is at the time of this recording head on up to CIP one.com check out their parts thanks so much you guys 11 minutes later We've got our Clecos run on in here. Some people sometimes ask, hey, what's a Cleco? This is a Cleco. And what it is, it's actually a form of a rivet. So this works kind of like a clamp in a way. This is a special tool that's used for opening and closing these things. You drill a quarter inch hole through your panel, and then you simply use the tool to um, put the Cleco whoop, right in there and release. Or vice versa, put the tool back on there to pull it back out. Some of these I could do them by hand. Yeah, Duckman's actually got strong enough hands to, to do them, but they're kind of sharp-edged. You know, really, really sharp-edged, so it hurts after I do a couple of them. Anyways, this looks pretty good on here. I think at this point, I should be able to release our clamps, and everything should lay in place real nicely here, via Clecos only. is look at that it's a much neater appearance too when you look at this thing and you see that the thing's been um, assembled without a ton of clamps hanging from it and messy welds and other stuff and these are kind of good for a good temporary fit too before you start finishing things up and what I will do 
now that I've got these things in place is once this panel is installed and I've got it the way that I want it and everything is attached on the sides I'm going to cut right through the Coleco holes and as I move down this way I will gradually fill with a couple of welds, just a couple of tacks trim 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 right through the hole and this will cut through both panels so if for some reason my line is a little wavy, it's a little less than perfect, it won't matter because I'm cutting through two panels simultaneously which means the two panels are going to have exactly the same shape at that point and I could just butt weld all the way, all the way along the rest of it, just a couple tacks here and there, tacks between the tacks so as not to warp the panel and uh, just run my way across it then the Clecos come out but this is a huge step in the right direction I now have a face attached to Gregory if you're interested in these Clecos or the tool that attaches them you can find links down below in my video description every time that you purchase some I think I earn a dollar so I appreciate you guys if you do purchase some of these and these are just quarter inch ones so in other words I drill a quarter inch hole whoop, and shove the Cleco into place these are just fantastic Eleanor was put together with a ton of these and now Gregory's using them too. Well, I guess that's not too bad. I still have to take off a little bit of that lip that you see on here. This is the remainder of the front valence that was on there. And, uh, well, it needs to be certainly ground off the rest of the way. At that point, then this could be installed in its place. But this bucket has no rust holes in it whatsoever. This is the uh, passenger, no, this is the driver's side one, left side. Now let's go ahead and throw it in there, see what it looks like. Okay, let's see, there's a little indentation here that lines up with the bolt hole. It should go in just like that. Of course, I'm not going to be able to push it in all the way because a piece of the old valence is still there, but there it is in place. Looks like it's going to work out nicely. And of course we got the one for the other side. This one has the welding in it because this is a piece of the uh, balloon tank that was in there. So now that this is a part, this is really easy to put up on the workbench and get this thing ground out and I can move it around which way, finish up the, uh, the grinding and welding of this thing. But anyway, let's see what it looks like in place. Once again, the dimple goes with the bolt hole. There it is. And she's in. Well, now that puts me at a really, really good stopping point. So I think we're going to wrap up this video and do the rest in another video. It's been really hard to get to this thing this week. Actually, the past two weeks I've been away from this thing. Just little bits and pieces that I can get recorded on this thing. I'm doing the best that I can to get things done. And, well, it's just the way it goes. If I'm lucky, I get one video a week on this channel and one video a week over on the other channel. I'm trying to push a little harder to get some more up there, but I don't want to give you guys crap videos in between where it's just me sitting talking about something for 20 minutes and then uploading it. That's no fun. Maybe you guys want me to do that. I mean, Scotty Kilmer does it. Would you guys be into that? I'm asking you a question. Honestly, answer down below in the comments. Anyways, yeah, that's it for now. So, licky likey, comment, subscribe. Plug that dingle belly. We get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net. You can even find my merch up there as well as all my different social media links. You can find Bee McQueen there also. Fortunately, she didn't make it out today. Too bad for her. She didn't get to join this video, but we're still going to shout to her anyway, so check her out. Also up on DuckShit.net. Join her Patreon, Instagram, her Facebook, her uh, YouTube. She's got it all now. She just got monetized, so congratulations to B. That's right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.